I was testing some slicer settings on my Ender 2 Pro and I found out these prints were coming out at an angle on this machine. Turns out it was a factory flaw and I'll show you how to fix it and those slicer settings on today's Film of Friday. Film of Friday is brought to you by the generous donations of these Patreon supporters. This video is also sponsored by Creality3dofficial.com by ComGrow. This all started when I made this mount for my print removal tool that snaps on right here to the arm so it can hold the tool and it's handy to get to. But I noticed in that print when I sliced it, sometimes there'd be a gap between the walls. I did two walls and I'd get gaps and in another profile I got no gap. So I wanted to figure out what the difference was. So I just wanted to test a cube with a one millimeter wall. So I went to the Tinkercad and I made one and that's what I used for my tests. I just used a 20 millimeter cube and then I used a whole block that was 18 millimeters square. So that way it left a one millimeter wall all the way around so I knew exactly how thick my walls are when I printed it. When I'm testing individual settings in a profile, I like to start off with the standard quality that's built into Cura. And when I slice this cube that way, I get the two walls just like this. And it goes all the way down to the bottom if I scroll through this. So there's a gap between the inner and outer wall throughout this whole print. And when I printed it on the Ender 2 Pro, I saw exactly that. The standard quality profile has a 0.4 line width. Well, that's 0.8 if you have two walls, not one millimeter like this cube. So I'm going to set it to 0.5 line width. That way it should give me a one millimeter width wall. But when I slice it and look at the preview, I still have a gap between these two walls. But when I actually printed it, that gap did get a little bit smaller, so the preview is not completely accurate. Next, I tried the outer wall inset. This, you can shift the outer wall in a little bit. In my case, I like to use 0.15. Now, this throws off the dimension a little bit, but a lot of times this will fill in that gap, and sure enough, it now looks like one wall. Even though there's two here, they merge together with that little 0.15 adjustment. And when it prints, you can see there's no line, so it definitely fixed that issue. Testing a few of these blocks, I couldn't separate those walls, so it's not a structural issue, it's more looks. So I enabled ironing to smooth out the top, and if I zoom in on the preview, you can see it puts a little layer to fill that gap, and it should flatten that out and make it nice and smooth. And when I printed it out, sure enough, the top of this thing looks really smooth. I know the gap is in there, but it's not a structural issue, so this is a quick way to solve it in the slicer. Now I noticed that one of the printers was not giving me a smooth of prints, and also the walls were leaning to one side. So I decided to lean it up against a square to see if these walls were indeed crooked. And when I did, I could see a gap. There was definitely uneven walls on this thing. Now the Ender 2 Pro comes mostly assembled, and it's this base beam that everything is attached to. The Y axis, and then the upright Z axis, and then the cross beam here that hangs from it. So this cross beam should be parallel to this bottom beam. And that's what I suspect it may not be true. So I used the caliper to measure from that base beam all the way up to the cross member and got 120.42 on the inside. But when I came to the outside, I got a much larger reading, 122.68. So that's two millimeters across the bed. That's a big difference. This screw on the cross member can actually be loosened and adjusted. And this comes from a factory already tightened. So I loosened it up and look how much movement you can get in this thing. So I pushed it all the way down, then tightened the screw back up. And now I had 112.68 on the inside and 112.87 on the outside. So that's pretty close. I'm going to go with it. And when I printed a chap cube, it came out nice and straight and much smoother than I was getting on those squares. Sometimes you got to adjust your slicer settings and sometimes you got to fix your machine. This machine comes mostly assembled out of the box. So that screw was actually tightened at the factory. Two of my three machines didn't have any problems. This one was way off, but it's fixed now, and I knew how to adjust that screw because of this, the Ender 3. Some people like this machine for beginners because you have to put it together. It's a kit, and that screw that holds the arm, that's one of the steps that you have to assemble. In fact, I point out how to do it properly in my assembly videos for Ender 3, Ender 3 Neo. So that helped me understand how this works. So sometimes it's better to have a kit. Sometimes it's better to just take it out of the box and learn to print and then fix it later. So it's your choice how you want to start with 3D printing, but these are both low-cost options to do that. Creality3dofficial.com by ComGrow has the full lineup of Creality machines, 
including filament, and you can even buy in bulk and build your print farm right from Creality3Dofficial.com. Best of all, they got one of my favorite little printers, the Ender 2 Pro, on sale for $139 in stock. So get one now before they're gone. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the other videos that are popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is one way, or just buy through those affiliate links in the description below. And if nothing else, click on that Filament Friday logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Filament Friday.